The 2016 general elections in Jamaica may very well be decided by issues after all. Pundits agree that the opposition Jamaica Labour Party GLP's 10-point plan has been garnering much traction, particularly the proposal to abolish personal income tax for those who earn $1.5 million or less annually. Shadow Finance Minister Audley Shaw says the plan is credible. More from Tanika Thomas. Jamaicans are tired of devaluation and desperation. Jamaicans need a chance to turn their lives around. Jamaicans need a break. And we are going to start on April 1 to give them that break. We have decided and we have announced and today we repeat and we reaffirm that on April 1, we are going to lift the income tax ceiling from 592000 to $1.5 million for everyone that earns $1.5 million and less. A bold commitment from the opposition's appoint man on finance, Audley Shaw. In less than 72 hours, Jamaicans will head to the polls to select the administration they believe is best suited to manage the country's affairs for the next five years. One of the key policies the opposition Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, is hoping the electorate will consider is its promise to provide a tax break for PAYE workers. The JLP promises that it will increase the tax threshold to $1.5 million, thereby providing a tax relief to some 118,000 PAYE workers once they are elected at the February 25 polls. Despite the criticisms of the JLP's tax plan, Mr. Shaw argues that the party has done its research. He argues that the plan isn't only bankable, but feasible. And it means, effectively, that our wage earners at that level will be taking home a range of additional funds per month of between 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 to 18,000 dollars more per month depending on where they fall in that band. Those who earn between 1.5 million dollars and 5 million dollars will continue on the existing income tax threshold of 592,000 dollars. Those above 5 million dollars will begin to pay from zero because they can afford it. We promised that we would remove user fees from health. We did it. We promised that we would remove cost sharing in education when we're government. We did it. We promised that we would cut transfer taxes and stamp duties. We did it. We promised we would establish a junior stock exchange. We did it. They're messing with it now, but we are going to reinstate them. And Mr. Shaw is also questioning the PNP's commitment to growing the economy. He says for 18 years, the PNP has only average growth at approximately 1%. However, he says that the JLP weathered tough financial hurdles during the global recession in 2007 and was still able to keep things stable. And yet, with that crisis, we were able to keep things stable. We subsidize food prices because the world food situation had gone out of control. We stabilized the exchange rate, kept it stable for over two years. And very few of our young people in the country know that of the $121 of devaluation since Eddie Siaga had the currency pegged at 90 cents, Jamaican to one US dollar. That slide of $121, the PNP is responsible for $100 out of it. Mr. Shaw, who is also the incumbent for Manchester North East constituency, is assuring Jamaicans that a vote for the Labour Party is a vote for economic prosperity and job creation. We are tired of the poverty that has bedeviled this land for far too long. The Jamaica Labour Party is fully capable of leading this charge to a path of prosperity and job creation. We did it in the 1960s. We grew 
by an annual average of 6%. Then in the 1970s was when the plunge to poverty started. We had seven consecutive years of negative growth under the People's National Party. In the 1980s, I was privileged to work with Edward Philip George Siaga. I was promoting investment overseas. We went to all over the world, literally, knocking on doors, promoting investment, and restored the economy to a path of 6% growth again. From 1986 to 1990, the average growth was once again 6%. The Jamaica Labour Party knows how to grow the economy. Mr. Shaw was speaking recently at the JLP's manifesto launch. Tanika Thomas reporting for Scene Caribbean News. Meanwhile, businessman and political analyst Kevin O'Brien Chang has noted that the Jamaican opposition's personal income tax proposal could very well decide who wins the elections to be held on Thursday. But though the proposal bears such a heavy weight, there is little understood about the particulars of that plan. O'Brien Chang, while speaking on In-Depth Monday, sought to explain where the shortfall resulting from the lost revenue would be made up. Somebody earning $1.5 million, formerly they pay $225,000, in income tax to the government per year, 18,000 a month roughly. Now instead of instead of going the government taking that, it will go to the person earning the money. A significant boost in in real earnings, big raise in terms of in terms of money kept. The JLP has shown the figures. They say it's a 12.2 billion shortfall. They're going to cover to the gas tax, which um, is sitting around, and increase GCT. And as I say, it is a formula that has worked in other countries. New Zealand, for example, in 2014, cut tax rates. Uh, they increased the um, consumption tax, which is the JLP may well do later. Who knows? But New Zealand cut income taxes, especially for the poor, the lower income earners. And their economy has done very well in the English-speaking world, probably the best, better than Australia, Britain, U.S., Canada. And they make it reference to all of the English-speaking world. So it seems like a decent plan. Mr. Brian Chang notes that there is no issue with the gap that would exist between those who earn 1.5 million and 1.8 million per annum. The band between 1.5 and 1.8, where you have to pay taxes and you'll take home less than someone earning 1.5. But that's like a car with a dent on the fender. It's not affecting the engine. The, the, the philosophy is a sound one. Um, there's no reason it's not doable given that the JLP has shown the figures and it's a big talking point, frankly. Um, a question the problem with the JLP has, a lot of people don't quite understand it. A lot of people I talk to today, they like the sound of the tax plan, but they're not sure they understand it. And they have, only have a couple of days left to explain it to the public. But it is something, cutting tax to, to lower income earners has been proven to be a, a good way to grow your economy because they spend the money. They don't it or ship it out. They buy more food, they build another house for their um, an additional room under house, maybe get a down payment on a car. They spend the money, there's a multiplier effect, let's say it works elsewhere, this is a good case in point.